دوكسيغا بوردين كي يمال الله اه اي امانو امانو بوردين اند اي اسكول ورحمة الله وبركاته ويلكم فان فور ستودنتس ويل كنتينيو اوار لسن اوار ان اونلاين لسنس فرام امانو بوردين اند اي اسكول اوكي اوار پريبيس لسن وي ور ديلي ويث هاو تو ان فاين دي پروبابيلتس اوف some simple events which is the uh, which is the material from form three we will we will proceed today the our, our normal le our previous lesson which was the random experiments and their outcomes random experiments and their outcomes this is video lesson four at the same time it is lesson four it is lesson four okay this is one review question from our previous material this is one review question from our previous materials. Okay, here we have, look, this example, it is about which of the following cannot be a valid assignment as we did it earlier, we will we'll, we'll do it again. Over probabilities for outcomes of sample space W1, this sample space consists of W1, W2, W3, they are much much well exclusive events they cannot occur at the same time as long as they are not sharing any elements look this one this is w1 w2 w3 those are the three events in order to check whether they are valid assignment or not we will we are going to compare the axioms from probability what was the axioms the probability of any event it should be greater than one, zero, less than one. It cannot be negative. If you have a number which is negative, then it will be it will be not valid as a valid assignment. At the same time, if you add all the probabilities, the probability of the sample space should be one. It should be one. Okay, let us check first. Number A. We will add first. There is no negative number. There is no negative number. Therefore, it accepts positive, less than zero, and greater than one. It doesn't have those numbers. Therefore, it obeys this one, but let's check whether the sum is one or not. 0 0.3 plus 0 0.6 is 0 0.9 plus 0 0.2 is 1.1. Therefore, as long as the sum is greater than one, it, it is not valid assignment of probabilities. Therefore, number A is not valid assignment, as you can read here from here. And A is not a valid assignment because the sum of the probabilities is not one. It is bigger than one. For number B, there is no negative number. There is no a number which is bigger than one. It obeys that one. It satisfies this condition. But let us check whether the sum is one or not. 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5, it is 0 0.7. Plus 0 0.3, it is one. Therefore, number A, P, it satisfies all the conditions. Therefore, is a B is a valid assignment. All the probabilities in the axioms above are satisfied. Okay, number C. Number C, let us check. For the first point, whether the probability is in between 0 up to 1. Look here, it is 0 0.3. This is minus 0 0.2. As long as we have a negative in the probability, it doesn't work. Therefore, automatically, this C is not a valid assignment because the probabilities cannot be negative. Because the probabilities cannot be negative. Therefore, the probability of any event cannot be less than 0. It means it cannot be minus. Therefore, also, it cannot be a number which is bigger than one it cannot be bigger than one therefore the probability of any event it is in between zero up to one it is in between zero up to one for any event if you add the probability of the sample space it gives you one it gives you one okay let us go on let us go on okay for here we, we will have some odds in vifa and odds again yes. This lesson it is about Odyssey in Vifa and Odyssey again. Yes. Odyssey in Vifa and Odyssey again. Yes. Odyssey it means is the ratio that for the ratio for the occurrence of an event and to the, the to the probability that the event cannot happen. Look here. If M and N are the probabilities of occurrence, it means it's happening the event and not happening the event of an event respectively, then the ratio 
this ratio m to 1 is called odds odds in viva if it is odds in viva it means that the first number which is m will be the probability of that the event can occur therefore that is odds in viva odds in viva <laughs> therefore the first number is the number of times that the event can occur. If we have a ratio of the form n to m, that is called odds against because the first number is the probability that the num uh, event cannot occur. Therefore, odds against the first number is the pro number because m it was the number of ways that the event cannot occur. If we have the first number of the ratio as the number of ways that the event cannot occur, it is called odds against. If the first number from the ratio is the number of ways that the event can occur then we will say all is in favor all is in favor let us do this example example 20 from our for four book the all is again is all this again is it means that the first number indicates the number of times is that this event cannot occur okay of a certain event is five to three five to seven we have five to seven but it is always again as this is the number of ways that this event cannot occur and this is the number of ways that the event can occur find the probability of this occurrence we are asked to find the probability this event can occur look this is the number of ways that it, this event cannot occur and this is the number of ways that our event can occur. Therefore, we are asked to find the probability that this event occur. It will be the number of times our event will occur divided by the total possible outcomes. Total possible outcomes comes from not occurring plus occurring events. So 5 plus 7, it is 12. That's the probability that this event will occur. Let us explain the solution. If we call E be the event, the required event, then we are given the number not e not e it means five times is not e for e we have seven and the number of e is seven that's number not e is five it cannot occur is five it can occur is seven times therefore the sample space is what if we add five and seven we have the total possible outcomes which is seven for E, we have 7. Therefore, the probability of getting E, it will be 7 out of 12. Okay, let me give you one hint. If you are asking the odds against of an event, the ratio of odds against of an event as 3 to 2, and we are asked to find the probability that this event will occur, it will be 2 divided by add them 5, 2 over 5, as long as this is odds against. But if it is odds in VIFA, this number will be the number of times that our event will occur. Therefore, it will be 3 divided by 5. It will be 3 divided by 5. Okay, let's do example 2. This one, it was given as Odyssey again. And here we are given Odyssey in Viva. If we are given Odyssey in Viva, the first number is N of E. That is N of E. And this is not E. This is E and this is not E as long as we have Odys in Vaifa. But Odys in Odys again is that is not E and 7 is E. Okay, we are asked to find the same the, as, as the previous one to find the probability of that this event will occur. Look, we have 3 ratio 8. It was Odys in Vaifa. If it is Odys in Vaifa, number of E will be the first number. N not e the number e cannot occur it is eight times what will be the sample space the sample space we will add them three plus eight it is eleven therefore probability of getting our even e is the number of ways e can occur which is three divided by the total number of ways simply add them it is eleven that is three divided by eleven look here n of e is three not e is eight Assembly space is 3 plus 8, which is 11. Therefore, probability of getting E, it is 3 divided by 11. It is 3 divided by 11. Therefore, we will look. If we, are, if, we are, if we are told that the ratio is always against, the first number indicates the number of ways that the event cannot occur. The second number indicates that the number of ways the event can occur. If it is always in favor, the first number is the number of times that the event can occur. The second number indicates the number of ways that this event cannot occur. Therefore, if we are given all this 
in vifa and we are asked to find the probability that the event will occur you will start by the first number divided by the sum of the two numbers if we are given the all this againness and we are asked to find the probability that the event will occur take we will take the last number seven just like this example seven divided by the total seven divided by the total okay let's proceed Okay, here we are given some uh, the rules of probabilities. We, we, we will here we will see some information about the rules of probabilities. There are only two rules of probabilities: addition rule and multiplication rule. Addition rule is about mutually exclusive events. If the events cannot occur together or at the same time, they, we will use addition law. If they are independent or dependent events, we will use multiplication rule. Let us see here if. If E1 and E2 are two events, then probability union, that's or it's addition. Probability of E1 union E2, it will be probability of E1 plus probability of E2. If they are non match well exclusive events, there will be sharing elements and we will subtract the intersection elements, the intersection elements. And if the events are match well exclusive events, it means that the intersection elements go is undefined. The, the intersection elements go is to undefined. It means that the probability of E1 union E2 is zero. So that P of E1 union E2 is B of E1 plus B of E2 plus probability of E2. Look here, we have some examples from here. Number one. Find the probability of obtaining six or four in one roll of a die. Look here, we have the die from here. This is the die. We are asked to find the probability of getting six or four on a single roll of this die, on a single roll of, the, of this die. We roll the die at once. We are asked to find the probability of six or four because it cannot happen. It cannot occur at the same time four and six, but it can occur either six or four. Therefore, for the die we have six faces, only one face is six. Therefore, probability of getting six, it will be one out of six or it is addition. Probability of getting four, we have six sides from the die. Only one side is four, therefore it is one over six. Therefore, for or we have one over six for six plus one over six for four. We will add them, it goes to two divided by six, which we can simplify. Number B, here we are given find the probability of getting head or tail, or as long as we are dealing or it means that they are much well exclusive events. Probability of getting head on a coin, it is to half. Balas, probability of getting tail on the coin is one over two therefore simply we will add as long as we have or or and or with or the word or we will add them we will add them let us proceed to this we'll do this example we will do this example okay number one Number one, we are given the we are asked to find the probability of getting six or four. Number two, head or tail. A die is rolled once. Number C, sorry, a die is rolled once. Find the probability that it is even or it is divisible by three. We will do these three uh, uh, questions in the next page. Let us have new page. Okay, number one, A. We are asked to find the probability of getting six or four on a single die, on a single roll of a die. It means that probability of getting six plus probability of getting four. Plus probability of getting four. That's E1 and this is E2. We know that for a die, we have for a die. Okay, let us get six. That's, it has only one side for six. That is one over six plus probability of getting four it has four six sides only one side has number four it is one divided by six therefore that is two over six we can simplify two over six as one divided by three that's the probability of getting an uh, six or four on a die okay question b question b 
we are asked to find the probability of getting head or tail if we toss a coin at once. That is the probability of getting heads, but that's the probability of getting tail. Okay, how many, the, uh, the coin it has two, only, only two sides. One face is head, the other face is, therefore this is one over two, plus one over two, that is two over two, it is one. Okay, number C, we are give, asked to find the probability of getting even number, even number, or a number divisible by, a number divisible by three, divisible by three. Look here. On a die, how many even numbers we have? It can be two, four, or six. How many numbers is divisible by three from the die? We have three and six. Therefore, these two events, they are not much well exclusive events. As you can see here, if it occurs as you roll the uh, and die, if you, you get six, that is an even at the same time, it's divisible by three. Therefore, we will use probability of getting an uh, even number it will be probability of getting even plus probability of getting a number divisible by divisible by divisible by three minus probability of getting six because it is in both and uh, number in both sets this one and the other set even numbers we have three over six how many numbers are divisible by three from me and from the die Two divided by six. There is a number which is uneven at the same time it's divisible by three, which is six, it's one over six. If we simplify this one, three plus two is five minus one, it's four over six. We can simplify as two over three. Therefore, that's the probability of getting a number which is divisible by three. Therefore, number C, it is not much with exclusive events because we have addition rule, but we subtract from the intersection elements. That's E1 plus E2 minus E1 intersection E2. Okay, we, so we will stop here today. Assalamu alaikum wa